From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Walt Albright, Johnny. Trinity Mutual Limited. Oh, hiya, Walt. How's your health? Terrible, since you ask. I got asthma, Johnny. Again? I thought we agreed that... Yeah, I know. I get suspicious. I get asthma. Happens every time. Cure me, will you? What's the case, Walt? Man named Eddie Kalin, C-A-Y-L-I-N, out in Los Angeles, died yesterday. $5,000 policy, double indemnity. What did he die of? Mysterious circumstances. Well, that's usually a fatal disease, all right, That's but... it, Johnny. That's all I know. Mysterious circumstances. The body was identified by the widow. I see. Our salesman out there can probably help you. He issued the policy only six weeks ago at the request of the widow. Uh-huh. Six weeks, one premium paid, check signed by the widow. Hey, tell me something. Would the beneficiary happen That's to be... That's right, the widow. Oh, this asthma's killing me, Johnny. You gotta do something about it. All right, Walt. Just call me doctor. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Home Office, Trinity Mutual Insurance Company Limited, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Kalen matter. Item one, $198.20, airline fare and incidentals, Hartford to Los Angeles. I hadn't arranged for anybody to meet me when I arrived at L.A., so I picked up my bags and headed for the taxi stand. Mr. Dollar, please, (laughs) wait a second. He was a small man, nervous and fluttery, with a shiny pink nose and a face like a little white rabbit. I was watching for you out on the ramp, but somehow you must have slipped by. You are Mr. Dollar, aren't you? Yes, I'm Johnny Dollar, but I don't think I... uh... Uh, Welch, Presley Welch. I'm the... Oh, yes, you're the district salesman here for Trinity Mutual. That's right. Well, how are you, Mr. Welch? (laughs) I'm out of breath at the moment (laughs) from running, you understand. You see, I'm troubled occasionally by asthma. You too. Oh. Do you have asthma, Mr. Dollar? No, it's a friend of mine in Hartford. Oh, in Hartford? Oh, well, you don't say. Yes, in fact, I came out here just to cure it for him. Out here? Oh, this is the worst place you could have come? Oh, you see, the smog here is so bad. Oh, now, oh, I do believe you're joshing. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I am at that. Come on, let's add to my expense account with a cup of coffee. Oh, do you really think we should? Oh, why not? Let's be daring. All right, let's. I always say if the company can't afford it, come on. If Presley Wells sold insurance the way he answered questions, it was amazing that he hadn't starved to death years ago. He skidded around the field, flip-flopped overhead, and buzzed the tower, all verbally, of course, and for 15 minutes, he didn't touch a wheel to the ground. But when he did finally land, he came in with a swoop. I do hope you'll accept my apologies, Mr. Dollar, for causing all this trouble, because the whole thing is my fault, of course. I don't see how, unless you murdered Eddie Kalin. I may... Oh, 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 why... I scarcely knew him. (laughs) A perfect alibi. Oh, no, 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 no. You misunderstand. Well, I'm just joshing. What I meant was, I wrote the policy. And I knew better right when I did it. Uh Oh? What do you mean? Well, Mr. Keelan was quite facetious about the whole procedure. When I tried to point out the retirement security factors in our multiple endowment plan, he actually laughed. You don't say? Yes. He said all the security he'd ask for was two aces up and one for the kicker. (laughs) Well, what about Mrs. Kalin? What was her attitude? Well, she was quite serious about it. Wasn't she the one who actually applied for the policy? Well, not technically. The beneficiary can't, you know. It's against the rules. Yeah, I know, but didn't she... Well, she she was the one, yes, that called me and asked me to come out and talk to her husband. And he finally signed the application. But he seemed to regard it as a joke. He only did it as a favor to her. uh, Something of that sort. And now it's turned out to be a $10,000 favor. What kind of a woman is she, Mr. Welch? Well, she's quiet, well-mannered, quite charming, I thought. I I must confess I felt a good deal of sympathy for her in view of her husband's incessant flippancies. A real happy fellow, huh? Oh, positively frivolous, Mr. Dollar. And I should have been warned by his attitude. You know, insurance is a serious business. Oh, sure. But Eddie Kalin didn't laugh himself to death. Oh, oh, my. He died in the fire when his automobile (laughs) caught 
Oh, oh, laugh. Oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> Say, tell me, how well did you get to know the Kalins, Mr. Wells? Oh, hardly at all. I saw Mr. Kalin twice, once at his apartment the evening I sold him the policy, and, and then two weeks later at my office when he came in to sign the paper. And Mrs. Kalin? Only once, that evening at their apartment. She phoned me earlier in the week. And you haven't seen her since her husband's death, huh? No, no. I phoned to express my sympathy, but... She wasn't available. She hasn't filed a claim yet. No, but I knew she would, so I took it on myself to notify Hartford. I, I just can't help feeling guilty about this, you know. Yes, so you mentioned. Yeah, not that I really am, of course, but, uh, well, you understand. It's, uh... Oh, sure, I understand. Well, <clears throat> I'll keep in touch. Watch out for comedians, Mr. Welch. Watch out for whom? Oh, oh, comedians, watch out for... <laughs> Expense account item three, $6.35. Taxi fare to the Beverly Wilshire Hotel and a second taxi to the West Los Angeles Precinct Police Station. The case wasn't being handled by any of the usual departments, Bureau of Homicide, Missing Persons, and so on. The man in charge was Detective Sergeant Jose Reynosa, unattached, working out of the Central District on special assignment. Pull up a chair, Mr. Dollar. When I talked with him in his office, Reynosa told me the reason for it. Yeah, it's a funny deal, Mr. Dollar. The facts in the case could point a lot of different ways. But the way it stands right now, they just don't add up in any direction. At least not quite. Do you mind filling me in on some of those facts, Sergeant? Yeah, I'll be glad to. Last Thursday morning at 4.20 a.m., we got a call relayed through the fire department to investigate a burned automobile out on the Palos Verdes headland, uh -huh. up in the hills above the harbor. The car was lying in the bottom of a ravine below the road, and it was a total loss. Apparently, the gas tank had burst and flooded the whole interior. Oh, what do you mean, apparently? Well, the upholstery may have been deliberately soaked with gas. The arson squad isn't sure. I see. That's why this case doesn't quite fit in any niche, Mr. Dollar. It might be homicide, might be arson, missing person, or only an accident. We're not sure yet. Anyway, there was a body in the driver's seat, burned to a cinder. Unrecognizable. But we did recover a few personal effects. A signet ring, keychain, wristwatch with a strap burned off, a wallet... Badly scorched. Mm -hmm. now, I noticed the keychain has a metal tag with the address stamped on it. Yeah, that and a part of the driver's license were the only leads. Eddie Kalen, Argus Terrace Apartments up on Sunnyway Drive above the strip. So we went up there and we ran into a second surprise. What do you mean? Nobody home. We attained access, found the place in a mess. There'd apparently been a fight, a chair and a couple of lamps were broken, and there were bloodstains in the living room. What about Mrs. Kalen? Located her the next afternoon. She'd been spending a few days at a friend's cabin up at Arrowhead. Does the friend confirm it? She was there alone. Had her own car. Mm. Yeah, she might have come back to town that night. But we got nothing to prove it. Or disprove it. Right. Just another one of those maybes. That's all this case is. A collection of maybes. Yeah, I see what you mean. Tell me, Sergeant. Just who was Eddie Kalen? Eddie Kalen, uh, male, Caucasian, height 5'11", weight 175, complexion olive, hair medium brown, eyes gray, age 34, birthplace oh, Chicago. What was he? What did he do? He called himself a promoter. Done a lot of things. Small-time agent for a while, handled a few singers and dancers, vaudeville and nightclubs. Been a bookie off and on, but mainly he was a gambler. Oh, and there's another maybe for you. Now, how's that? According to rumor, that he was in an all-day poker game. It broke up only a few hours before we found the car. The game was supposedly run by a big-time gambler named Topo Leanley. And the word has it that Eddie cleaned up something over $60,000. And there was no money found on the body? Nope. Have you talked to this uh, Topo? Sternly. We had him in here for four hours this morning. He never heard of Eddie Kalen. Wouldn't know a poker deck if he saw one. Spends all his spare time raising petunias and driving his dear old mother to church. <laughs> like that, huh? <laughs> like that. So there's another one for you. Maybe Topo didn't like the idea of losing 60 grand, decided to get it back. Or maybe the widow wanted the insurance, or it could be that somebody else took a crack at him. And it's possible, of course, that Eddie mailed the 60,000 to a blonde in Milwaukee and just ran off the road by accident. Yeah, it's possible. But I don't think so. I don't think it was an accident. I'm always getting cases like this. It's the kind they always put me on. Officially, it's because I'm a college man and majored in criminology, but... Actually, it's because I'm a Latin, Mexican ancestry, and they know I get certain feelings about a case. Hunches. Oh. Uh -huh. And how do you feel about this one? It's hokey. Real hokey. And it's murder, not an accident. But beyond that, Ken Savi. Why don't you poke into it a little, see what you can find. Then maybe we can talk it out some more over a bottle of Muscatel. Yeah, good idea. Uh, where can I find Mrs. Kalen? 
Oh, the widow? Well, that's a good starting point. <laughs> She's out at their apartment. There's the address. Okay, thanks. Oh, uh, just one other thing, Sergeant Reynosa. When you gained access to the apartment, I assume the door was locked. Uh, yeah, it took a little effort. Oh, what kind of a lock? Uh, automatic uh, night latch? A spring cylinder? No, it was an old-fashioned warden bolt. Had to be locked with a key. Mm-hmm. What are you getting at, Mr. Dollar? Oh, a hunch of my own, Sergeant. Uh, let's save it for the Muscatel. See you later. Expense account item four, two dollars. Taxi to the Kalen apartment in West Hollywood. It was shortly after dusk by now, and the lights were coming on all over the city. It was a cool, clear night. Los Angeles at its best. As we swung off the Sunset Strip and started climbing up into the hills, I looked back across the basin toward the dark mass of the Palos Verdes headland that bounded the far side of the great carpet of lights. Three nights ago, a man had died over there in the darkness. And in a few minutes now, I'd be talking to his widow. Or at least to the woman who claimed to be his widow. Keep the change. The Argus Terrace apartments, like most of them in that section, sprawled up the hillside above the street. Six or eight apartments on as many different levels, all opening onto a central patio filled with walks, steps, and banks of tropical plantings. The Kalin's apartment was at the top, and I was still 50 feet from it when the door opened and a man came out and hurried toward me. I stepped back against the shrubbery and waited for him. Good evening, Mr. Welch. Oh, oh. oh. my. Oh, it's you. Your second visit to Mrs. Kalin? Second? Oh, yes. Yes, it is. I imagine you've been notified, too. Notified? Well, yes. I got a wire from the home office in Hartford this evening. That's why I'm here. Well, Mrs. Kalin has filed under the double indemnity clause of the policy. A claim for $10,000. She has, huh? She, she hopes it can be paid immediately. And without any trouble. Well, I don't like to dash a lady's hopes, Mr. Welch, but I've got news for the widow. News? The claim won't be paid immediately. And before this is over, there's going to be a lot of trouble. Oh? In fact, Mr. Welch, if my hunch is right, this claim is not going to be paid at all. Here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, a lovely girl lies, cries, crosses her heart, and hopes to die. And a killer fires from the dark. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>